I'd like to uh, introduce uh, our leadership for Pathstone, uh, our executive director, Annette Phillips, if you would stay in, and um, Annie Poole. Um, she's also one of the uh, staff members. And do we have any? Shelly, uh, one of our board of directors here. Shelly. And David Ortega's on our advisory board uh, for Pathstone. All right, I'd like to go ahead and turn the mic over to Annette Phillips, who is the Community Director, Community Development Director of Pathstone, Indiana. Um, welcome, as Yvonne said. Um, thank you for joining us um, this afternoon. We have had experiences with projects. Um, our last project was the actu actually the coldest day, I think, last year. And that's why we're not doing it on site. Um, that and there's a lot of work to do. So um, thank you for joining us here. And we can be warm and comfortable and cozy. Um, I wanted to share a little bit with you about um, what I'm calling the Abbott Project Story. Um, as you guys may know, our mission at, at Pathstone is to build family and individual self-sufficiency. And we do that through strengthening farm worker, rural, and urban communities. The Indiana Office of Pathstone has its roots in farm worker housing technical assistance and a long history in home buyer programs, including home ownership counseling and education and home buyer financial assistance. With the guidance and support of our corporate office that has a vast experience in affordable housing development, the Indiana office ventured into single family new construction. We also have done owner occupied repair and single family acquisition rehab sale. Continued growth and guidance has led our office um, into the area of multifamily affordable housing development. And it's with that, um, with that guidance from the corporate office that last year we were able to complete our very first um, project of that nature called Old West End Place Apartments. It's a four unit multifamily rental project near downtown Muncie. We like the uh, property because it was very similar to our last project. Um, it also had a really nice um, location uh, on a bus route uh, walkability, it was on a main thoroughfare near downtown, um, easy to bike places, and so that was very appealing to us. And it was also, for the most part, structurally sound. Um, after many negotiations, um, grant writing, pre-development work, and some very complicated acquisition strategies, we were able to successfully acquire the property and the rehab will begin very soon. My thanks goes to the City of Anderson, to Pathstone Corporation's real estate development team at our home office in Rochester, New York, Monica McCullough, who again was our, um, at that time, supervising the Indiana office, the local Pathstone staff, our board, and um, the advisory committee, and of course our funders, who you'll hear from shortly, as well as First Merchants Bank, Star Bank, Jim Smith with Indiana Title Company and all of the realtors involved and everyone who worked really hard to get this project off the ground. At this time, I would like to recognize our development team members, Karen Robbins. Karen, you want to stand up so people back there can see you? Um, Karen is going to be our GC for the project and she also happens to be a certified women-owned business, so we're really proud to work with her. She does great work, and um, we worked with her on our last project. So I'm um, excited about having Karen um, partner with us again. And um, just appreciate all of the support of um, all the folks in this room. Uh, we have several different programs. I'm looking at Nancy Vaughn with United Way. They support us in other programs. We've had a lot of great support from this community. Um, and, of course, the city of Anderson. We would not have been able to do it um, without... We don't like to go into communities and do work if uh, we're not, you know, if they're not excited about us doing that work. And um, not everybody is going to be 100% excited with affordable housing, but we know it's a good thing overall, and um, we've had that support, and we really appreciate it. So, thank you. We'd like to acknowledge the mayor of the city of Anderson, if he would come forth and give a few words. 
the Honorable Mayor Thomas Broderick, Jr. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you everyone for being here today, and I want to give a special uh, thanks and welcome to Past Stones for coming back into Anderson and helping us with this project. Uh, as you know, it is an exciting time when we can add uh, to the community some affordable housing for folks and that we can take a building that's been sitting around now for a little over 75 years uh, that just comes in through one of the main entrances into the city and to be able to rehab that and bring it back to life. I think that's a great thing and we owe you a great deal of appreciation and thank you for your time and for your efforts. I want to thank First Merchants for all of their efforts in this and of course uh, the folks with community development who have reached out and helped as well. Uh, I do look forward to the project. I think it's going to be great. Uh, it's uh, exciting to know that we're going to have uh, extra units for folks to be able to come and to live in and to enjoy and to hopefully uh, learn some things that will help them and moving forward in their lives as well. I know that's part of your mission. So thank you again very much and thank you all for being here today. I certainly appreciate it. It's uh, very good to, to hear those words of uh, appreciation uh, from the mayor of this great city. And uh, it's just awesome to know the potential that's getting ready to take place uh, within the Abbott Apartments. And we, we really appreciate you being here today, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to uh, introduce Megan, is it Kohler, uh, Senior uh, AHP Compliance Analyst. I'm with Federal Home Loan Bank, and we're excited uh, to partner with First Merchants Banks in um, granting funds to this project. I have to kind of um, brag on past zones a little bit. Um, their previous project in Muncie is often one of the projects that we showcase in our presentations um, throughout Indiana and Michigan. So we're excited to be a part of, of this project. And a little background, uh, Federal Home Loan Bank of Indianapolis, there are 11 uh, federal home loan banks nationwide. And um, in Indianapolis, we cover Indiana and Michigan, and we invest 10% of our earnings into affordable housing projects through our member of local banks. Um, and so uh, Past Stones uh, applied for one of those grants and, and was awarded those uh, in 2015. Um, she has with her um, Rosemary I'm sorry, Roberts also with the same job title. Um, and I think Rosemary sat with us when we did our um, kind of our pre-application review maybe. Um, I can't really say enough about Federal Home Loan Bank. One of the things that people don't realize, I think, is even though federal is in your name, the funds that come through um, through Federal Home Loan Bank and our bank partners, private dollars. Um, so that's really important to note. Um, that's you know five hundred thousand dollars of private dollars, highly competitive round. Um, so we're really pleased to be awarded, and we appreciate your support. Uh, just a few comments to share on behalf of First Merchants Bank uh, commercial team, as well as uh, our company as a whole. Uh, when this process, I, I think, initially started was November of 14, so it's been a few days since we had first met, and uh, very quickly it was easy to tell with the Net Phillips passion uh, for this project, uh, but more importantly for what they do through their programs initiatives, uh, it, was, it was something so easy for us to buy into. Uh, at First Merchants, we, we fully uh, believe in community support and to serve the community, and so it was a uh, it was a natural fit uh, with what Annette and her team brought to the table. So uh, we're very excited about uh, what's to come here in the coming days and weeks and months uh, to see this uh, project really take, take hold and, uh, and see what the finished product's going to look like here. So we're very excited about that. Um, and thank you for allowing us to be part of this project. So thank you very much. Now we'd like to welcome <laughs> the uh, uh, CEO of the Madison County Chamber, Mr. Carl Morey. You know, I was thinking about this, Annette. There's been a theme today, hasn't there? Um, yes. It's community partnerships. It's the city of Anderson. It's First Merchant. It's obviously what you've brought to the table as a non-for-profit organization. Been around since 1969, and who knows how many families you've impacted, but you're about ready to impact eight more families, and that's heartwarming. So I appreciate the work that you're doing. United Way, that helps make this possible. In fact, thanks to United Way of Madison County, um, 
Pathstone is going to share the stage on February 25th as one of three finalists for the Non for Profit of the Year Award. So, looking forward to that night of storytelling and, and just an opportunity to really share what our non for profits are doing. And, Nancy, thank you so much for years ago us getting together over some warm beverage or something and saying, we really need to honor our non-for-profits. And by doing so, we help the business community recognize the impact, economic impact, that a non-for-profit has on our business economy. Because if you're not doing it, then the businesses have to do it. And we need them out there making commerce and bringing in and selling their widgets and gadgets and manufacturing and those kinds of things. So very appreciative, again, of what you're doing, Annette and Yvonne. Um, through this partnership and so thankful for you know mayor I think this is our second ribbon cutting project of the year we're off on a good start aren't we a round of applause for our new mayor this is exciting so on behalf of the Madison County Chamber our 500 plus uh, business members our board of directors uh, one of which is here Kurt Kablendi thank you uh, with First Merchants just excited for this new project and congratulate you and we look forward to working with you on a few more projects coming up soon so thank you very much appreciate it i would like to mention our community partners um, those partnerships were really important with our application um, pastone does bring a lot to the table but we know we can't do it on our own um, so we had um, some mous that we signed that went in as part of our federal home loan bank application uh, one of those was with the Anderson um, trustee who's going to be providing um, bus tokens or whatever the, you call them now, bus passes, whatever. <laughs> um, so folks um, in our apartments, our tenants can have um, transportation. And um, the um, Transition Resources uh, Corporation, their Head Start, um, they have agreed to provide um, transportation services to any of the families that are in the apartments that need um, to transport kids to Head Start. So that was wonderful. They don't do that just for everybody, um, but they stepped forward and agreed to do that. Uh, we're partnering with the Impact Center. Um, they are going to provide employment and training services specialized for, um, for our tenants as well. Um, so those were some of the things that we put together that I think helped our application. It's going to help the tenants, most importantly. And we really want to um, use our rental properties as stepping stones because, as I mentioned, our background is in home ownership. It's not for everyone, but for those who want to do that and are able, we want to be able to help and support them. So um, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned our um, community partners. Okay, so now we're ready um, to give you a nice, warm, inside <laughs> First Merchants Bank um, virtual tour of the property. And I will give the microphone to Brian. Um, if you would like to um, just kind of make any comments you want. I think it was mentioned earlier, this project started um, in the fall of 2014. And I think that's always an interesting path of when you, when you apply for a grant and all the work that goes into applying for the grant. And then actually a year later, you figure out what you really can not afford to and what you can do. So getting these things off the ground, is always uh, it always seems so, well, you've had a year and a half, and really we haven't had that much time actually working on the drawings themselves and the projects and the budgets and all that. Um, but it's always great to see these, these programs, these houses, pulled back out of the brink, so to speak, from, uh, from what, they've been, what they've been through. Um, I'm sure you've all driven past this project on 8th Street out there. Um, was anyone ever in it when it was 30 years ago, maybe, when it was really active? It's a really cool little building. The little apartments are just fantastic in there. And I think that's part of the place where we started with is that the buildings themselves and how they're arranged and, and in some ways how they're laid out and the features were really something we wanted to retain um, um, about, the, about the units. Um, from the exterior, we're basically uh, trying to clean up the exterior facades um, and trying to maintain some as many of the details as we can on the outside. Um, we have other plans for more things once we get through some budget items, but we'll see how those work out. Um, on the left-hand side over there, those are Murphy beds that are in the wall. Those are going to be, re be remaining in the, in the projects. They're going to be converted into um, entertainment centers. So the TVs and stuff will be behind all that, but we'll keep the doors. We will take out the wireframe bed. That seemed a bit inappropriate to leave in there. So that's coming out. That's coming out. Um, the projects, we get um, all new kitchens in all the units. In one of the buildings, the building on the 
east side, there's going to be some rearranging of the apartments themselves because we're going from uh, eight units in that building down to four units in the building. So there's some severe rearranging of the, of the pieces and parts. But again, we're keeping all the features. As an example, that's in one of the bedrooms, one of the Murphy beds. That will stay as a closet in the bedroom in, in the future. So um, we've really worked hard to try to retain the pieces and parts, both from the standpoint of the historic nature of them and they're already there. So why pay to replace something that already exists and it works? So we try to reuse all those things. Um, the buildings will get um, all new systems, meaning uh, heating, cooling, um, plumbing, electrical systems. They'll get start over on all those things. Um, try to reuse some of the cast iron drain lines as we can, but we have to see how that works out. Um, some of the bathrooms are in more shape than others, but uh, we try to redo all those, obviously, and put new ones in where we can again. Um, some of the features, like the arches and the openings, if we can keep those, we retain those um, in the projects, too. Um, this project was nice because it really doesn't have a giant hole in the roof like most of them do. So this is not big water pouring through. That's a pretty helpful thing. Um, it's a pretty small, small little roof issues, but um, in general, I think you're gonna find that the, the spaces seem a lot like they are originally. Um, and I think people are just gonna love being in there. Like the hardwood floors, where we can resave those, we're gonna save all those. Um, again, for the same reason, if it's there, why start over and replace them? Um, the building, buildings will get some all new replacement windows. Um, we looked at some other options in there and this is the most economical solution for us was to replace the wind, replace, put replacement windows in and retain the trim um, on the exterior and the interiors of the buildings themselves. Um, the building on the east actually originally had a different roof shape on it. It used to have a flat roof on it and the hip roof was put on sometime in the past. Um, we looked at some other options there and just our budget wouldn't allow us to kind of pull that back to where it was. Um, unless someone has some extra money they want to hand over. <laughs> About sixty thousand dollars would be really helpful. We could we could put it back right where it was. You can your name could go on it. I could put a name plaque up there on the roof if you like. We could have that. But um, and there really are some great details, like I said, um, around this around the buildings. Um, we're going to take the, take down the little shed in the middle um, just because it was kind of an added component of it. But retain the porches, retain the trim on those porches, and try to figure out some ways to to bring some of those trim details back that have been taken off over the years um, and adjusted over the years. Um, so I think um, in terms of layout, again, in, in the buildings, that the, this apartment, as an example, will stay exactly the same layout it is, but just all new systems and, and put back into it and new bathrooms as, as well. Um, because really, this, the building works well in a, lot, in a lot of cases, in a lot of places. Um, the building has a lot of stairs in there. Oh, there's a nice, interesting detail. Those are uh, ironing board closets that'll be staying there as well. So those are fun little pieces. Um, the buildings both have full basements, and we've elected to kind of cut those off from the, from the tenant access, um, again, for our budget, our budget reasons. So, but it has a lot of stairs and a lot of things moving around. We're trying to rework some of those as well. Um, the kitchen layouts, uh, in some cases, are changing. In other cases, are staying very similar. Um, that was one of those staying pretty similar as it is. Um, but all in all, I think you're going to find that this cleaning the building up and getting it occupied again and repairing some of the pieces and parts that are broken makes a huge difference on that corner. And really, um, I think, um, establishes kind of a a foothold for a neighborhood. It really helps everyone else around there to really realize that, hey, someone's caring about the neighborhood and here's a good example of that. Um, and having people in there is also helpful. It's always helpful having people around. They help everything, <laughs> they really, really do. So it's really gonna be great to see this thing come back alive. Um, construction wise, I think we're gonna try to start in an, another month or so-ish. The project is at the state right now for state design review um, and it's kind of plotting its way through that. There shouldn't be any issues with that to get through all those, but um, it'll get through that and then uh, Karen and her crew would get in there and start hauling out all the stuff that's not attached, first of all, to see what we have, and then kind of going through some other demolition, selective demolition, to better understand some of the things that we can't take apart um, before we actually have possession of the building. So keeping in mind that all this work has been done before ownership ever changed hands, so it's kind of a weird, I'd like to take it all apart and then do the drawings, but they never let me do that. I always have to start before we've taken it apart and then work with Karen to resolve them in the end. Um, we are, we'll be changing out some of the window locations and sizes because we need to meet some egress um, requirements out of bedrooms. But other than that, um, I think you're going to find that it really the building has the same kind of character. It'll, it'll regain that character it had in the past and uh, come back to life here in not too long. We're not physically changing the exterior other than just kind of painting and fixing pieces and parts. But we'll keep all the details that are on there um, and, and retain the siding and, re and repair the siding as well. That's back on there. The brick will stay on the front. We do some tuck pointing to repair, to repair some of the brick and replace some of the concrete stoops. Um, I think the concrete stoops on one or two of them have a crack in them. I think we're replacing some steps on there and that was about it. It's always interesting to me about looking at a budget for a project like this and has eight units in it. And it always seems like you're spending a tremendous amount of money until you think that's also eight bathrooms and eight kitchens. And if you've ever replaced your kitchen in your house, they don't come free. You multiply it times eight and all of a sudden you've spent half your budget on cabinets and plumbing pieces and parts. So it really is an interesting process to see how you take from a dollar amount on a, based on a per unit cost and see how that fits into what the building really needs to have done to it. 
Um, and again, this one is in great shape because it isn't falling down. That's a huge part of you're not spending a lot of money rebuilding the entire property just to start in on putting the kitchens and baths back in it. In closing, I just want to thank everybody for coming. We're, we at First Merchants are very excited to be a part of this project and to work with all of the communities.